All right, let's dive in today, shall we? We're going on a little trip, virtually, of course, headed to, well, a place that's just, wow, visually stunning A-N-D, historically significant. Hi, Elmore Abbey. You got it, Kyle Moore Abbey in Ireland. And we're going deep, deeper than your average tourist pamphlet. We're talking intriguing insights, the kind of stories you'll want to tell everyone. Sounds right up our alley. Right. So our guidebook today, it's called the Kyle Moore Abbey Visitor's Guide. It's from loveorandall.com, which, by the way, is a fantastic resource in general. I've seen their site. Lots of great info. Exactly. And this guide, it's not just dry facts. I mean, their eye is history, but also romantic tales and practical tips. So we'll make this deep dive, informative A&D fun. What do you say? Let's do it. I'm ready to be transported. Okay, so first things first, paint us a picture. Where exactly is Kyle Moore Abbey and why should we, the listeners, care about it? All right, close your eyes and imagine the west coast of Ireland, wild, rugged, windswept. Got it. Dramatic cliffs, that kind of thing. Exactly. Now zoom in on a region called Connemara. It's famous for, well, pretty much being unbelievably beautiful. Mountains, lakes, you name it. Okay, so picture postcard Ireland. And Kyle Moore Abbey is smack dab in the middle of that. You got it. And it's more than just scenery. Though that IS, amazing. It reflects, well, love, loss, and a whole lot of Irish history all wrapped up in one place. Okay, now you've got my attention. So we've got to talk about this love story I keep hearing about. It's not your typical romance, is it? Oh, not at all. This is 19th century epic love story territory. Mitchell and Margaret Henry, that's where it starts. Mitchell, he wasn't just some love-struck lad, right? Nope, wealthy businessman. But he fell head over heels, first for Margaret, then for this whole Connemara region. Ah, so he didn't just buy her flowers, he went all out. You could say that. He built her a castle overlooking a lake as a testament to his love. Can you imagine? Wow, talk about grand gestures. But there's a but here, isn't there? Can't all L be sunshine and roses? Sadly, no. It's a bit like those old romantic tragedies. Just a few years after the Abbey was finished, Margaret, she died while they were traveling in Egypt. Oh, how awful. So what happened to Mitchell? Did he just abandon the Abbey? No, he retreated there, spent the rest of his life at Kylemore, surrounded by, well, the memories of his wife. That's heartbreaking, but it adds so much depth, doesn't it? It's not just a pretty building. It's filled with emotion. Absolutely. And the story doesn't end there. This place, it went through some changes, went from a home to something, well, quite different. Okay, now I'm really intrigued. So from a love nest to what exactly? In 1920, it was purchased by Irish Benedictine nuns, the Irish Sisters of Charity, they're also known as. Wow, from a symbol of love to, well, a religious order, that's a huge shift. So what did the nuns do with the Abbey? They turned it into a girls' school, boarding A&D day school, and it lasted almost a century. Imagine generations of girls learning and growing within those walls. Wow, that's incredible. So much history in one place. And speaking of, we can't forget the building itself. This architecture, it's described as classic Gothic. What does that even mean? Think dramatic. Soaring arches, intricate stonework, the kind of details that draw your eye upward. I'm getting a very Hogwarts vibe. Am I off base? Not at all. Gothic architecture, it's meant to inspire awe. Makes sense for both a grand home and home, a religious place, right? Totally. So pointed arches, stained glass, all that good stuff. Oh, yeah. And get this, the guide mentions gargoyles. Lots of them. All over the exterior. That's a bit of a spooky vibe, doesn't it? Definitely. And the location is just, well, perfect. Right at the foot of a mountain. Super dramatic backdrop. Okay, this is going on my travel bucket list for sure. But the Abbey itself, it's just the beginning, right? There's more to see on the grounds. So much lore. There's this Victorian walled garden. Six acres, enclosed by stone walls, a world of its own. A secret garden. Sign me up. This isn't just a and y garden, though. Think geometric patterns, tons of different plants. Mm -hmm. Meticulously designed it was. Sounds impressive. But why go to all that trouble for a garden? Was it just for looks? It reflects the Victorians, their whole mindset. Order, control over nature, that was big for them. Mm -hmm. It wasn't enough to appreciate nature, they had to shape it, you know. So the garden itself is like a statement, a piece of art? Exactly. Yeah. And speaking of art, we can't forget the chapel on the grounds. It's neo-Gothic, stunning stained glass, marble altar, the works. Wait, the guide, it mentioned something about frescoes. Right. Mm -hmm. Scenes from the life of Christ all over the chapel walls. And here's the thing. It doesn't go into detail about which scenes. Ooh, a mystery. Makes you want to go see for yourself, doesn't it? Absolutely. 
And that's part of the magic of Kyle Moore Abbey. It's a place that rewards curiosity. It makes you want to look deeper. So far, we've got a gothic castle, a love story, a school, a garden straight out of a novel, and a chapel with mysterious art. What else could this place possibly offer? Well, we haven't even talked about the mausoleum yet. The what now? The mausoleum. It's where Mitchell and Margaret are buried, together, overlooking the very castle he built for her. Adds another layer to the whole thing, wouldn't you say? Wow, it does. Makes you think, huh. Okay, listeners, I think we need a moment to process all this. Take a deep breath. Imagine yourself in this incredible place. We'll be back soon to explore even more of Kyle Moore Abbey. All right, we're back. <laughs> Kyle Moore Abbey, still buzzing about it, honestly. That love story, it's just, wow. Yeah, definitely not your average romantic tale. <laughs> and it keeps coming back, you know, woven into everything at the Abbey. Right. Speaking of, we talked about the whole school thing. The Irish Sisters of Charity turning it into a girl's school. Ran for almost 100 years closing in 2010, that's got to have left its mark, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Adds another layer to, well, an already pretty layered place. Think about it. All those young women for generations walking those same halls, studying in those rooms. I'd love to know what it was like being a student there, surrounded by all that history, that scenery. Talk about an immersive experience. Makes you wonder about the stories, right? What it felt like for those girls. Did they feel connected to the Henrys, the love story? Did the grandeur of the place inspire them? I bet it did in some way. And it makes me think, what kind of education did they get there? Any notable alumni? Our guide doesn't say, but it'd be cool to know. It's a good reminder. You know, history, it's not just about the big names and events. It's the everyday folks, too. Those schoolgirls, they're part of Kyla Moore Abbey's story as much as anyone. And it brings us back to Mitchell and Margaret, actually. Their vision, it included that chapel, right? The one with the frescoes we talked about. Exactly. Shows how their story keeps echoing through time. Even as the Abbey's purpose changed, that spiritual aspect, the artistic side, it stayed strong. I bet those nuns, the schoolgirls too, found a lot of meaning in that space, mm -hmm. surrounded by those images of Christ's life. Makes sense. Speaking of the chapel, you said those frescoes were worth exploring more. What makes them so special? Besides, you know, the mystery of what scenes they show. Well, the frescoes themselves, they're pretty unique. Painted right onto wet plaster. Means the artist had to work fast, no room for error. It's a technique they used a lot in churches, grand buildings, back in the day. So it's not just to you what they painted, it's how they did it. That level of skill. And the fact that they chose scenes from Christ's life, that tells us something. Oh yeah. Shows how important faith was. The desire to make the space feel truly spiritual. Remember, Mitchell built the Abbey for Margaret out of love. But it was meant to be beautiful, faithful. A place for reflection, too. And let's not forget... The when and where, Victorian era, huge E.E. religious revivals happening. Plus, they loved Gothic architecture. All about that sense of the divine, like you said before. Exactly. So those frescoes, they're not just decoration. They're carefully chosen. Part of the whole story, the feeling you get at the Abbey. They make you think about faith, what it meant to the Henrys, the nuns, even the schoolgirls. Wow, so many layers here. History, architecture, art, faith. It's almost too much to take in. But in a good way, right? Shows how rich Calmore Abbey is. It's a reminder to slow down, pay attention, experience it with all your senses. And that reminds me, we got to talk about that garden more. The Victorian walled garden. It's more than just flowers and trees, isn't it? Oh, way more. Imagine this. You walk through a huge archway and suddenly you're in this world of color. Amazing smells. It was designed to be a Victorian masterpiece where nature meets, well, human control. You mentioned geometric patterns. That's not random, is it? What's the deal with that? Goes back to that Victorian thing. Order, control. They loved symmetry, arranging things perfectly. It's how they saw the world, trying to make order out of nature, which they thought was kind of wild and messy. So like a little paradise they built, all balanced and perfect. Exactly. And in this paradise, they had all kinds of plants, rare ones from all over the world. It was a way to show off their knowledge, their connections, like they could tame even the most exotic things. It's amazing how much a garden can tell you about people, huh? Over the whole time period. Shows you got to pay attention to the details. And don't forget, just being in the garden, the colors, the sounds, the smells, it hits all your senses. Place to escape, you know, to reconnect with nature, even if it a, a super controlled version of it. Okay, I'm sold. This garden is on my list. But we haven't talked about the mausoleum yet. That final piece of the puzzle, Mitchell and Margaret buried together, looking out over the castle he built for her. It's sad, but also, like, things came full circle. It is poignant, isn't it? Shows their love story didn't just end. 
it's still there, in the Abbey. The mausoleum adds that weight, makes it real. More than just a story in a history book. And it makes you think about life, loss, how love can last. Those themes, they seem to run through the whole Abbey, from the very beginning to, well, it's time as a school, a place for reflection. It's like every place has a story to tell, doesn't it? Layers of history of people's lives. And sometimes those stories, they really get to you. Make you think about your own life, your relationships, how we all fit into the bigger picture. As we wrap up, I want you to imagine something. You're standing in that chapel, light coming in through the stained glass. What do you feel? What stories do you hear in the quiet? Hold on to those feelings because we've got one last part to this deep dive more takeaways, and a final thought to leave you with. We're back one last time. Kyle Moore Abbey. Honestly, I'm a little sad to be wrapping up this deep dive. It's just such a captivating place. More than just a place, really. An experience, you know. It does stick with you, that's for sure. And you were talking about those feelings being in the chapel. It's interesting how a space can do that, make you feel all kinds of things. Right. For me, it'd be, I don't know, awe. Seeing all that artistry, the skill, and then a pang of sadness thinking about Margaret's story, but also peaceful somehow. Like the Abbey has soaked it all up over the years, the emotions. Makes sense. It's the power of place, I guess. Some spots, they become like holders of all that shared stuff, the feelings, the experiences. All those people who've walked those halls, found comfort in that chapel, been inspired by the nature around it. It leaves a mark, doesn't it? I think so. And our guide, it mentions the practical stuff, right? Visiting tips. Book tickets ahead, wear comfy shoes, give yourself plenty of time. Good advice, but it also hints at something, I think. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. It's like they're saying, don't rush this. Callamore Abbey, it's for savoring, taking your time, wandering those gardens, really letting it sink in. And remember, they recommend the guided tours. It's like, there's more here than you realize. Let us show you. Exactly. And when you engage with all that, the history, the details of the building, the stories, the people, it becomes a richer experience, doesn't it? More meaningful. You're not just seeing a place. You're feeling it. I love that. It's not just ticking a box on your travel list. It's about immersing yourself in all of Kylemore Abbey, past and present. And honestly, I kind of feel like I've done that already, even just talking about it. Me too. But even with all we've covered, there's always more to learn, you know? More stories to uncover. That's the cool thing about a place like this. It makes you want to keep digging, even after you've left. So true. I think that's a great place to wrap things up. We've talked about the history, the architecture, the human side of it all. Even some tips if you DO, go visit. But in the end, Kyle Moore Abbey, it's something you got to experience for yourself. Couldn't agree more. And when you're there, remember all this we've talked about. Let it all wash over you. The history, the art, the stories. Who knows what you might discover? That's what I love about these deep dives. Always something new to learn. Until next time, folks, happy exploring.